All right. This video is, uh, I just wanted to talk about the Tesla company who built cars, or they tried to build cars anyway, um, and now they're building semi-trailer. And I mean, the internet has got lots of video of uh, heavy mechanic um, over there um, worry about their job and stuff like this and I I'm just gonna explain they have no no risk about their job for the next whatever uh, times uh, you know they can go to sleep at night and not worry about their family and you know, not having you know a job to support the family and stuff like this because I'm gonna explain the company who designed a truck right they go through process of testing and you know to make sure the truck is capable of going through now just taking off and zero to 60 and and and, and less than five seconds but to pull a load <coughs> properly through all kinds of condition mud water sand dust anything is thrown at them because the company who makes trucks literally they don't really design the trucks. I mean, they design a chassis, but then when it comes down to building a truck, the truck driver is the one who build the truck because they're the one of using the specific equipment, like every equipment operator. Equipment, equipment operator is probably one of the most advanced engineer in this plan because he actually used the equipment. The engineer out there, and you know, I'm not trying to take anything away from the engineer. The engineer, they're very good because when someone comes up with a concept, the engineer can take the concept and make sure every material is used, have the proper strength and is the proper material to use it, and then they can make it look good with geometry, you know, because that's what an engineer is, right? They're, they're, they're good, have, okay, if I want to make a, a, a frame, you know the stress of the frame and all that, so we're going to use the proper material to make that frame, and on and on and on, each bolts, whatever, pins, you know, a motor, transmission, it's all going through the engineer, and then they take that, and then they break it down and say, oh, this is not strong enough, we have to make it, use a different material. That's what the engineer, you know, you cannot do anything without engineer. I mean, they go to school to learn. I mean, the old engineer, they used to be the one who actually designed stuff, but we don't have that today anymore in the engineer world. It's just engineering period, right? It's pre, I mean, the old engineer did all the work literally for the young engineer. The young engineer just go and fetch information and the old engineer to, to do their job because it's already, I mean, you, can, you cannot reinvent the wheel, right? You can only make maybe gooder, better looking or smoother, smoother, smoother and all that stuff, but a wheel is a wheel, it's 360 degrees. So, but one Tesla is lacking is people. I mean, they have lots of people working for Tesla, right? I mean, especially when they're getting $10 million a month of free money from the taxpayers' money so they can keep their, 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 their little business afloat because they can't sure don't make enough money to sell car by selling car uh, uh, and 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 to have this, you know, multi, tr I would say a trillion dollars worth of industry who doesn't make any money, so the taxpayer have to pay for that. So, one thing they have no, they they don't have, they have, they have engineer today or they go to work on a skateboard, a mountain bike, a little electric scooters, right. And those guys says we gonna we can design a truck better than anybody else, but they never been behind the wheel of a truck. You know they don't know what it is. You know to have a load passing you by and taking the cab the truck, right? When ha when the sun is stopped, that truck sun is stopped. The whole load doesn't stay on the on the thing. I don't care what you have there. The load doesn't stay on it. It will gravity will take over and it will push that through that cab. And there's thousands of trucker, right? And an experienced trucker in the mountain. Or they can't talk anymore because they're dead. 
because they didn't have the experience of the old trucker. The old trucker know, you know, what is torque on the wheels, what is torque, how the clutch work in your truck, what's the gear ratio in your, in your transmission, you know, what speed your diff should be, because you know they have they have split split gear on a diff, right? And how much dirt can I go if I go in the dirt after I'm finished with it? What I have to do to my rig so I can keep using my rig when not falling apart, right? So I mean those little pencil mac they have in Tesla's company, they can design skateboard all day long because a skateboard is just a skateboard. It's a flat piece of wood with four wheels on. Doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that one out, you know. So I mean, like you know, everybody's getting excited about the Tesla truck. But the Tesla truck, again, I say that about the car, and I re retain what I said about the car. The car is a battery-operated dildo, fancy one with lots of bell and, wh and, and whistle, which I almost got. T-bone the other day on the city by a Tesla car because the guy was busy playing on his large screen, computer screen, and he almost blew through a goddamn stop sign. And I saw it coming and I said, well, buddy, you want to buy me a new truck? I plow into me. I mean, your Tesla car, you know, I got steel in my truck, you know, I'll survive. So, but he managed to stop, you know, a foot away from me. And his eyeball was like this big. Like, it was my fault. I had no stop. He had a stop sign, right? So his bloody smart car didn't realize that. They can't read the stop sign. So, uh, <clears throat> now we have a bigger dildo. I would call him the big wheel dildo, right? Because he's got a good range, 500 miles. But, how long it takes to charge those battery back? I mean, the car takes all night. You no, know, if the battery is dead, totally dead, it takes a long time to charge the car battery. I mean, you got 1,100 pounds of lithium battery on that frame. So, you know, so I'm in the truck. That's one downfall is the charging of the batteries. The, that's the first downfall. The second downfall is where the driver is. It's sitting in the middle of a cab sitting in the middle of a cab. A trucker is supposed to see their wheels constantly. What about if the mirror get broken? You can't drive that truck anymore, unless you have camera. What about if the camera is full of slush? You can't see it, you're gonna stop every time, every, every thousand feet to clean up the camera, right? The driver have to be able to see his wheels on the side when he's driving. He's gotta be able to see all those wheels in his trailer. Not only you have your mirror, you knock a mirror off, that's it, that truck is, you can't drive this truck. You know? Not a little problem, right? That's how stupid fucking those guys are. So now you have, you know, you got a truck would take off, you know, does uh, 60 miles an hour and then faster than a Viper almost. So, great. And I, I'm pretty sure they have something to load on the torque and stuff like this, right? Because, I mean, you can't hold anything taking up that fast and stopping it that fast. I mean, I know what it is. You have no brake pad on that thing because you have magnetic brakes. And they stop, believe me. I know about magnetic brake. They stop. They stop way too fast something. So they probably have, you know, a... Uh, 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 we call that or a reverse reverse load and can adjust the braking and all that stuff. But one thing, you know, if they have a seal compartment for their motor and the wheels, right? It's, if it should be sealed, but the problem with seal, since they're pushing out literally thousands of amp into those wheel motor, I like to see how they do when they go up, uh, you know, uh, 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 I mean the highway going through the mountain when you go from uh, from Oregon over the mountain to California. How hot those drum? I mean, how hot those motor they going to run? Because they have the same system. See, they didn't invent shit because they cannot invent shit. First thing they're using a starter motor for their car, right? Now they're using an alternative, a, a, a brushless alternative motor into it. They can't invent their own fucking shit. First thing, right? So now they're using. 
and a, 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 just a giant drum motor, just like the scooters, the electric scooter. You got you buy those electric scooters, right? Those they look like gas scooter, but they're, they're electric. I work on those things. Actually, I help a guy developing his business before he died. And uh, I used to be able to crank up, you know, the speed of a scooter like this. You just double the batteries. If it's a 48, right? Well, then you get a 96 volt. You just double the battery and and bring it up to 96 volt. Or just add one or two battery, you know, and you'll see the powers and you, 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 you last way longer. Your, your, your uh, kilometer increase per charge and all that stuff. But, this is a fine and dandy and a flat, right? We're not touching the battery on the scooters. Most people cannot take a big hill for a long period of time. If you have two passengers on it, you burn the motor. You fry the motor because the motor, of course, if you slow down the wheels, you put some, some resistance on the wheels, you get a, the amp start climbing up, and you fry your winding, your winding of your armature. It's... Just a simple fact. Everybody knows about that. Anybody who knows about a starter motor or any other power motor, if you put too much load on it, guess what? It burns, right? So they didn't think about that. We have hills here in Canada and North America, you know. I mean, like, you know, you're climbing thousands of feet. I mean, thousands of feet for miles and miles and miles. Well, believe me, unless you have an anti-gravity system on your fucking truck, those motors, they're going to get hot and they're going to burn because if it is sealed, they cannot cool off themselves. And I don't care if you cool it off with water cooling inside, they ain't going to do it. They're going to fucking boil that water or whatever cooling you have, they're going to boil that. Now, if you don't have that thing sealed, then, I mean, truckers take the, the trucks all over the place, in the mud, in the bush, you know, we do, I mean, truck is a, is a piece of equipment, and if you have to take a load, you got to take a load where it's supposed to be. I mean, like, you know, look at the Alaska Highway, you know, the ice rigs, and all that stuff. Like, you know, that Tesla guy ain't going to do it. It's not going to make it there, because the guy, is they're not, they didn't ask the right people, how should we build a truck? I don't have to ask me. I'm like I'm not a trucker. I know how to ride. I know how to drive a truck. I did it, you know, a few times for my friend. You know, you know when they were tired and stuff like this, I jump behind the wheel and just drive the damn thing, right? But you know, at least I know when it come down to going up a hill or going down a hill, I know what torque is all about and how to use it. Would not, you know? And they say, oh, this truck can never jackknife. <clears throat> I'm sorry, but your fucking truck is gonna jackknife when you're coming down with eighty thousand pounds. You know, and suddenly you hit some fucking black ice. I don't care what fucking you got. You know, ice is ice. You're going to fucking jackknife. That son of a bitch is going to fucking fall like a goddamn knife. You know, it's going to fall and just like, like this. You know, and your, pla your plastic truck will, and especially your battery, which is right behind your cab, that big mountain of battery behind your cab. And that's lithium battery, by the way. And if your people don't know what lithium battery is, I suggest you learn. Right? Crack. Take a battery, take a knife, cut open up so the lithium gel is, op is, is open and then throw it out in a puddle of water see what happens. You know, you'll see what happens. Believe me, you'll see. I don't have to tell you. You know, you'll find out exactly what lithium is all about. It's not pleasant. So, uh, I mean, like, you know, so, I mean, even if you just drive the truck on a flat, flat surface, if the motor is not sealed, you will pick up the, ma the magnet, okay? The magnet. Very strong fucking magnet in those drums, right? They will pick up. You have to understand, the road is not new here. It's trillions and trillions and trillions of vehicles drove and trucks drove over those highways. It's dust, iron dust, from the wear and tear of everything. From all the car, wear and tear the car, everything, the dust is on the road. And when you drive, the dust comes out. You know, it's very simple. It's disturbing, you know, the air. And guess what? You get very strong magnet, it gets in there. And when it gets in there, guess what happened? You will make 
a cushion of hair of dust. Now the dust from the magnet will start rubbing against the, 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 uh, the stator and it's going to ground the stator and very short period of time after that smoke will come out of your wheels. It will just melt that stator right up. Happen all the time and those little electric scooter. Oh yeah, that's right. They don't want to think about electric scooter because they know better, you know. The jack of the whole trade. But they don't even know where the pick and a shovel is. But the jack of all trade, they know better how the they know exactly how the wheel turns stuff like this because they got skateboard and little push push scooter and 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 and, and mountain bike to go to work. They the cast ass engineer. So just to let you know, you know, this truck has so many flaws. You should not be past the highway department should not pass the safety of that truck in the highway department. Simple as that. That's that's what I'm saying. Just as using proper common sense is what a real truck is, a rig. I mean, you can ask them all, all the other company. They're all really laughing at that because they know. They can't wait for him to put a fucking 80,000 pound of load on it and going through a mountain, see how he's going to do. Because I don't want to be the, you know, I, I hate to be the fucking driver because first thing, you can't jump out of that fucking truck. You're sitting in the middle of the cab. Jumping is a split second reaction. Right? And <laughs> you have no split second. Uh, you, you was probably, it was fucking door, they probably locked by the computer. <laughs> so you're stuck in that cab sitting in the middle and watching through that big screen what is going to come through it. So it, it, it's going to be, you know, something to, for all the mechanic out there who works on big rigs, you're going to have some entertainment because when those trucks hit the road, it's going to be some laugh from the truckers. You know, I hate to be the first guy driving the fucker, but anyway. So just for the guys out there, you know, all the people who are afraid of losing their job because the Tesla, look, all the other company who are making car, they're not afraid of Tesla's car taking over the world because they can't fucking make any money with their car. They proved that by going to the government and begging, begging for money so they can, it can create an industry, a fake industry that's not going to go nowhere. So that guy is paying someone. Of that $10 million he's getting, I bet you, every month is a million dollars a month who's going in someone's pocket in the government. And your government, which is the United States I'm talking about, we don't have the Tesla company in Canada yet. And I hope it'll never be here, but anyway. So I can't go over there and, 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 and deal with it, but you guys, you will find out. I mean, like, it was just, it's a lobbyist. That was a job of a lobbyist. Someone is making a million dollars a month because he lobbyists the government to give him a $10 million a month so he can make an industry who's actually a fake industry. But, hey, I'm just the idiot here in front of a camera. Throw a few little fact in life when it comes to trucking because you know what without trucker the will stop dead nothing move oh we got the boat we got this we got the plane without truck everything fucking stop your fucking shell and your store are empty in 72 hours i don't care how many boat and plane you have it if you don't have a truck to bring that stuff from the plane to the store or from the factory to the plane Nothing fucking move. So think about that for a second. Trucking business always will be. And I'll be long fucking dead. And it will still be truck out there. Big wheels. Who will be turning 18 wheelers. So for all the truckers out there and all the drivers. Thumbs up. Because you're the backbone of every country in the world. Without you. We don't have nothing. We'd be sitting in a goddamn cave on and need a tarp. No, I'm not in tarp because you need a, need a trucker to bring the tarp to you. You know? So we'd be sitting in the middle of nowhere, you know, with a fire. That's about it. That would be our whole bloody thing. So, but anyway, 
for all the truckers out there, I wish you a good holiday and hopefully a safe holiday. If it's too snowy, too slippery, pull over and take a good nap, my friend, because you deserve it, because I know what trucking is all about. So everybody out there and the mechanic and stuff like that, you guys can have a good Merry Christmas and a good Happy New Year's. And don't worry about the trucker, because on January, I have a little surprise for you guys. Not for changing your way to work, to make you work way easier, because I'm going to remove the fuel tank of your truck. You don't need those fuel tank. You know, your truck can run a nitrogen. And nitrogen is the air that big motor sucks all day long. Thousands and thousands of cubic meters of air goes through that motor in a 10 hour shift. And it's all, 75 to 78 percent is nitrogen and that's your fuel, my friend. So I don't know, I figured out how to prime it. So it's just a question of refining everything up and your vehicle will run where it's, it's been running all the time, nitrogen. Because you have to understand the first car invented, Ford didn't invent a fucking car in the first place. They didn't invent it, the chain link, the, 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 uh, the, the chain uh, uh, assembly. He took the idea from a cannery. And it's all it's a bunch of lies. But the first, first combustion engine car with a combustion engine it was used to be called a nitrogen car. And then that got took it away and then it got moved to a petrol car and that got switched around again to a gas car. You have to learn your history because the history has been hide it and, and, and distort it for a long time. So for the last word I said, you guys don't worry about it. Your family don't have to worry about it. You're not going to lose your job overnight. It ain't going to happen because we need a trucker out there to move that shit around. So by the way, I need a trucker to move all the partial I'm, I'm, I'm ordering for God's sake. Can't lose those guys. I won't be able to do what I'm doing. So thumbs up. Smile up, man. Don't worry about it. Enjoy your family for the, for the holidays. Have a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.